Faisal Khan is one of the developers reshaping downtown Roanoke, making it a destination for residents seeking a more urban lifestyle and an attractive option for specialty retail. The development company headed by Faisal Khan, with his father John content to stay in the background, remade a 60-year-old building on West Campbell that once belonged to Magic City Ford, turning it into upscale apartments and retail space. Khan also owns the old Merida Bakery plant on Salem Avenue, where Phase II renovations are still in the works, and he is turning back the hands of time at the former Crystal Tower office building at 2nd and Campbell. Faisal Khan, welcome to the interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your background, you have an interesting background. You you earned, I guess, a PhD in pharmacy? Uh, PharmD. PharmD, yeah, okay. Pharmacy. At Virginia Commonwealth, and you were a practicing clinical pharmacist in Richmond for a while. That's correct. And then you made the jump to go, come back and be a developer. And I guess your dad was in the development business. Right? Yeah, the um, family had a real estate investment background, okay. and um, you know, it's something that I kind of dabbled in during the pharmacy years, and eventually, uh, when I made the move from Richmond back to Roanoke, uh, what I was doing part-time kind of snowballed and, and I made the, the switch, uh -huh. took a hiatus from pharmacy and, and haven't gone back. Right. Did people think you were kind of crazy or is it just you <laughs> kind of following what you wanted to do? Your uh, heart? Yeah, I got a little bit of both. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I think it was a good switch and I'm very happy with what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Well, your, your, your development company is one of the companies that's really transforming downtown Roanoke. And uh, one of the uh, background you sent me, you said that while you enjoy managing investment properties, that you find the adaptive reuse and rehabilitation of historic buildings to be the most rewarding. Yes. And you're doing that now with the old Crystal Tower building. But talk about your love of restoring old buildings. Yeah, um, so in recent um, years, the past two and a half years, um, I've transitioned all of the, uh, the investment properties, the day-to-day -day management um, of, of those properties to a management company. So that allowed me really to you know, have the time to pursue these type of niche projects. Mm -hmm. And adaptive reuse in particular, um, it's very rewarding for me. I enjoy history. I, have a personal hobby, um, you know, antiquing, going to auctions, picking up old things, and uh, to be able to do it on the larger scale and the level of, of historic buildings is, it's really interesting. And the projects aren't um, as cut and dry as, you know, cookie cutter new construction. Mm -hmm. So there's always a challenge ahead, uh, but it's a, a flexible type of project that evolves as we go along. So mm -hmm. it keeps it fresh. You're finding a lot of things at Crystal Tower, yes. which will go back to its old name, the Ponce de Leon, as, right. as in the hotel. Uh, terrazzo floors, uh, right. some ornate Spanish stylings and all that. That's right. been kind of fun. It's kind of peeling away the layers of an onion. Absolutely. Um, you know, there, were, there was some uh, historic material that was visible when we first acquired the building. But it wasn't until that exploratory demo that we actually got in and, like you say, started peeling away the layers mm -hmm. and, um, and have found an, an impressive amount of fabric dating back to 1931. Mm -hmm. So a lot of Spanish Renaissance architecture. Um, and the, that period, the early 30s, uh, Art Deco was kind of in its full swing. So to be able to find that material, keep it, restore it and integrate it into the final product, it is, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's gonna be a beautiful building. And we want it to be historically accurate and honor the original nomenclature, Ponce de Leon, um, and get away from the Crystal Towers, which was, you know, an 80s era. Right. And of course, um, you're also using historic tr tax credits. So yes, you sir. have to sort of adhere to certain That's guidelines when you renovate to, get, to be Right, that's exactly right. And uh, you know, on the both the federal and state level, right. the, the tax credit program is, is pretty strict in uh, what we can keep, what we're allowed to alter, and you know, so we definitely keep the historical integrity in all the primary areas of the building. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's about 90 apartments, restaurant and retail, and you're hoping to open August 2014. That's correct. Okay. You also, uh, your company also redid the uh, the 401 West Campbell building. That's correct. There's apartments in there and um, uh, retail there. Mm -hmm. And also you're reworking the old Merida 
Bread yes. building. That's right. On Salem. Talk about those projects. Yeah, 401 Campbell Lofts uh, completed in June of 2012. Um, a little smaller project. Uh, that building was a total of 20,000 square feet. <clears throat> and over three decades transition to the building that we um, acquired and worked. And originally that structure was the home of Magic City Motor Company um, in the automotive commercial historic district. Mm -hmm. um, so that was at a very industrial uh, rehab. We ended up with 15 apartments. Um, all of those are one bedroom with the exception of one two bedroom unit and four commercial spaces. It was a very successful project. Uh, those all of the all of the residences, in fact, were rented sight unseen, mm -hmm. and we were 100% leased when we opened. Uh, so, been a good project, and also, like you mentioned, that west end of downtown is uh, it's getting some movement. Yeah, you're really helping push you and some other projects really pushing downtown away from the market area. Yeah, we um, we. You know, and, and prior to the 401 lofts and the lofts at West Station, another big project behind us, um, the cotton mill was uh, completed, you know, a couple years before. And I think that kind of, it set the, the motion in moving west. So also in that corridor at the corner of Fifth and Salem is the old Marita Bakery. Very interesting building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually, Huge. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it's actually four different buildings. Um, very unique history served as a operating bakery into the 80s and um, then there were some other um, swaps between owners and the building basically has sat vacant for you know close to 20 years uh, really uh, heightened state of disrepair um, and the city was very happy for us to get that building because it um, it needed to be secured mm -hmm. and so what I did with the bakery <clears throat> First of all is to you know secure the building, um, get it weather tight, and then I implemented a phased development. So phase one was complete last year, November of last year, and that was a specialty build out of about 12,000 square feet for Brickhouse CrossFit. Right. And they're a very successful business and I think the, the larger space has helped them with that. Mm -hmm. uh, phases two and three are on the horizon, they're coming next. Okay, and there'll be some uh, uh, retail and uh, living spaces there as yeah, well. Yeah, you know that building, it's, it's interesting. I think phase three will be some, some form of mixed use property. Uh, but the building is, is very unique and I don't think its best use has presented itself. Okay. I've had a lot of creative ideas, um, you know, and with different uses, but right. I don't think that one use has revealed itself mm -hmm. yet, so we'll see what happens. Just have a couple of minutes left. I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you're, you've poured many millions into, the, into these projects. Why so much faith in downtown Roanoke? Well, I think um, the, the track record and success of my projects and in other similar projects is uh, the evidence that all of us are relying on. Mm -hmm. And while the market continues to be there and, and these projects are viable, uh, we'll continue to do them. How do you know if you're gonna, how, do, how will we know if Roanoke, downtown Roanoke reaches a tipping point, Faisal, where it's just, just too many projects yeah. versus the, the business, the jobs right. there? Yeah, that's a good question. And um, uh, it's very important to watch all those parameters that might be indicative of um, of that decline. And uh, vacancy rates are a, a prime indicator. And there was a recent study, I mean, very recent, that showed that our vacancy rates for downtown residences are at three percent, which is very healthy, very healthy, and very low. Um, so I think you know, watching vacancy rates and uh, and turnover and waiting lists, things like that, is mm -hmm. going to you know be the indicator that it might be time to slow down. Mm -hmm. Just have about 20 seconds left, so, but can you feel the, an energy in downtown Roanoke from all these residential Absolutely, I, absolutely. I, grew, I grew up in Roanoke. Um, and so the, the downtown Roanoke that I grew up in 20 years ago and the one that I drive in today are two very different things. Okay, we're so, gonna have to leave it there. Faisal Khan, right. appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much. much. Thanks for your time. Our guests have been State Senator John Edwards of Roanoke and downtown developer Faisal Khan. I'm Gene Morano. You can look for me in the Roanoke Star newspaper, Play-by-Play -play magazine, and in Valley Business Front. And listen for me Saturday and Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. on Roanoke This Week on Fox Radio 9, 10 a.m. Don't forget you can watch segments of the interview on YouTube. Just search by my name. Until next time, take care.